Hello, my name is Jos van Krij and in this presentation I want to demonstrate how to calculate the mass moment of inertia. Uh, I'm going to calculate it with help of an example from the book Dynamics. So I'm going to take an example from that. It's the Dutch, books from, the Dutch book from Hibbler. After calculating the mass moment of inertia by hand and showing a little of what it is, I want to verify my results with help of 3D CAD and in this case I'm going to use the SOLIDWORKS software to verify my results. So I'm not going to discuss the full background of the mass moment of inertia. If you want to refresh your memory about that or if you want to have a look on what the mass moment of inertia exactly is, you can check it up in a lot of books. Uh, the easiest way to find some information about it, some background, is look on the, this Wikipedia site. Uh, for now, I'm going to just state that the mass moment of inertia is a, a measure of how much resistance a mass will have against an, a moment for starting an, acceler an angular acceleration. So this is the question of the book, the Hibbler book, it's an example. It's a combined part consisting of a thin round bar and a thin plate. And the question of the Hibbler book is first determine the position of the center of mass for this combined part. Second question is determine the mass moment of inertia around that center of mass. So it's going to be two steps to get the results of this question. So first we need to get the, the center of the mass. For that you just uh, multiply the mass of the bar with the y position of the bar. You add the mass of the plate multiplied by the y position of the center of mass of the plate. And then you're going to divide that by the, com the combined mass of that part. So that's the, the way to get the mass moment of a combined part. You can do it in this case very easy because it's only one coordinate. If you've got two coordinates or three coordinates, you're going to have to do the same calculation in all that coordinate directions. So, a calculation shows that the center of mass for this part is at 1 meter 78 in the negative y direction. And if you look at the construction, it could very well be because the, the plate has got 5 kilograms of mass, the bar has got 3 kilograms of mass. So the combination, since the plate is the most heavy, the center of mass should be around the top of that plate. It, it seems like a, a very good position if you think about it. So it's just a little check of the calculation whether it's good or not. Okay, now we need to determine the mass moment of inertia. For that you can use a table. In the Hiller book there's a table in the back of the, the book, the last page, that shows the predefined mass moments of inertia for standard shapes. If you don't have the Hibbler book, there's probably a way of finding these tables on the internet. So we're going to use the one of the bar that's here and the one of the plate that's here. So we can see the, the mass moments of inertia. They are uh, given in all three coordinates. In this case, we're going to rotate the plate around the, the z-axis. So we need to take this one, this definition of the mass moment of inertia. For the bar, we're going to rotate around either the x or the y direction. So it doesn't matter in this case, you see that they both have got the same formula for the x and the y direction. So uh, that's the definitions of how much mass moment of inertia, so how much resistance a part has against a moment in the angular acceleration. After getting those predefined values, we're going to uh, get a correction factor for the displacement in the mass moment of inertia, the, the center of mass, towards the center of the rotation. So the, you can find that on the internet, also on Wikipedia or on books, uh, as the Huygens-Steiner theorem. And it states that the, the mass moment of inertia for any point is the mass moment of inertia for the center of gravity plus the mass multiplied by the r squared and r is the distance between the center of rotation and the center of mass so the further you get out of the center of 
mass and you start rotating the path apart around that axis the the more the resistance of the part will be against that moment in starting an angular acceleration that's the background of this equation so now we're going to calculate the the complete mass moment of inertia for the combined construction for that we're going to use the predefined mass moment of inertia of a bar and a plate and then for each part we're going to have a look at what the displacement is from the the center of mass for that part and the center of rotation that we're going to use now so it's this point so here you see the, the full calculations uh, you can recalculate them if you want to and at the end you get this result so this is the, the complete mass moment of inertia of a part it's roughly four and a half kilograms multiplied by meter squared so also you can check that result a little the bar adds slightly more to the total mass moment of inertia than the plate this seems quite correct because the bar has got a quite a long distance from the center of rotation in this case the, the center of the mass of the complete construction so here's our calculated result you can use your standard cal calculating tables to recalculate the result if you want to and now I'm gonna check for SOLIDWORKS and see if I can find the same mass moment of inertia in there so I'm gonna start SOLIDWORKS over here let me see and I'm gonna open the part that we've just seen so I've drawn the part that we've just seen in the previous the presentation as well so the total mass of the part I can have a look here it's 8 kilograms so 3 kilograms for the bar and 5 kilograms for the plate and now in this page I already can see the mass moment of inertia as well so it's this value here this is the the mass moment of inertia for the part and as, we, as you can see it's the, the mass moment of inertia around this z-axis that we see over here and we see that's exactly the same value plus here we see the y component of the center of mass for this complete construction and it's also the same value as we've previously calculated by hand so now what can we do with this value so this this is the value here that is the mass moment of inertia around this axis the z-axis at this point and let's see here we've got the same axis but at a different location so it's also the z-axis but taken at the output coordinate system which is this one so it's at the top of the part so now we can have a look what the difference between that is so this one is roughly 30 this one is 4.5 so it means it's a lot harder to start a rotation for a part around the top of the part itself so we can have a look at that in SOLIDWORKS as well so I'm going to use the SOLIDWORKS motion analyzer software for that first I'm going to start doing calculation with a torque that is a thousand newton millimeters so one newton meter and if I put that torque at this point it will take that part a certain amount of time to start rotating so I'm gonna play the animation and I can see it starts rotating faster and faster and after roughly 7.8 seconds it's done one complete revelation so now if I'm going to put exactly the same moment at the top of the part I can open an animation of that as well so here we've got the same part but now I'm going to rotate it around this axis and then I'm going to do the same calculation so I'm going to replay it it's going to start accelerating con continuously and in a constant way so I'm playing it from the start and as you can see it starts rotating a lot slower and after 7.8 seconds it's not even done a quarter of a revelation so it's because the mass moment of inertia against this axis is a lot bigger than straight through the center of mass of a part 
And that's the end of the presentation that I want to show on the mass moment of inertia.